Today we're taking a first look at the 2022 Trek Roscoe 9. It's been an exciting year for hardtails, and this is one of the reasons it's been an exciting year, is the brand new Trek Roscoe. If you haven't seen my first initial thoughts on this when this bike was announced and all the info that I looked at online, go check that out. It'll help you make sense of a lot of this. I'm really excited for this bike for a few reasons. A, Trek dealers are all over the place, and people are going to be able to throw a leg over a more modern hardtail more readily. And when people ride more hardtails with good geo, that's always a good thing because if we break out of the stigma of hardtails being only for XC or only a budget bike or an entry level bike. For a lot of people, a hardtail is the right choice, better than a full suspension. Not everybody, but for a lot of people. So while I love supporting small brands and small bike builders, it thrills me when the big bike companies have modern geometry on their hardtails. Recently, Trek has undergone an initiative to reduce packaging waste, which I'm a huge fan of. We all love this environment. That's why we ride bikes in it, and anything we can do to reduce waste is good. I end up recycling all my packaging materials because I have to ship these bikes back when I'm done, and I just put all the materials back on and ship it back. But there is a lot of waste involved in that process when you're at a bike shop. Wow, they've done a good job. There's almost no packing material here. Let me show you what we got. Way less foam. Really good job, Trek. I see bubble wrap. One piece of foam that I'll be able to reuse. So bravo, Trek. Thank you for doing that. I'm sure it took a bit of thinking and engineering and changing the way things were done, but I really like this. All right. So the Roscoe 9 is their highest end Roscoe. It comes with the best parts, the best spec, and today we're going to take a little bit closer look at that. This reminds me a bit of Spots packaging. I think they have even less waste, but bravo Trek for such a big company taking those initiatives to reduce waste. It's a very Trek looking bike. They've got that signature Trek bulge at the head tube, big square down tube, looks beefy in person. So this bike retails for $2,700, and a lot of people are going to say, wow, that's a lot for a hardtail. Well, it's the flagship model. It's got high-end components, stuff you don't need to swap out. It's a bike that's ready to just ride. We'll see on the ride review if there are any components that stand out as needing to be replaced, but I'm betting not. We shall see. Just because I've seen these components on a lot of other bikes, there's a couple stuff that's new to me, like some of the Bontrager stuff. So at first glance, this bike does not have the budget beginner bike feel that the old Roscoe's had in my mind. The old Roscoe's, you could still build them up to be nice. I, as I've said before, that rear QR was a total miss, especially on the higher end ones. Yeah, you could adapt it to boost with some hubs, but it was just too limiting. I thought that was not a great move by Trek. So I'm really excited to see them back with true boost through axle. I mean, Trek invented boost. You'd think they'd stick with it on all their bikes, but I guess they could save money by going with a QR in the back instead of a through axle back then. Anyway, this doesn't feel like a entry level bike. Everything feels solid on this thing. So size wise, I could have either gone with the medium or the medium large. And when I get my bikes in for review, I have to look at the geo chart and make assumptions and order based on that, just like a lot of you do. Now, these treks will be in stores, so you can actually throw a leg over them and compare the two, which will be great. But I'm not able to do that because this is such a brand new bike and they're not in stores yet. So I opted for the medium for a couple of reasons. One, the seat tube on the medium large is too long for me and I won't be able to run a 150 mil dropper on it. So that is a bummer. And the seat tube angle is steepish. It's 74.7 degrees. It's not quite as steep as some of the other bikes I'm used to riding. And so when the seat angle is not as steep, I like a shorter reach that changes the effective top tube. When the seat angle is really steep, like 76, 77, a 440 mil reach is gonna feel real short and I'd opt to size up. But around this size, I opted for the medium 
A lot of that's due to the seat tube size. I think Trek wanted to be able to get two water bottle bosses inside the frame because that's a big hang up for a lot of people online. And that means longer seat tubes usually because the dropper can't go down past this. So for shorter riders like me, that's a bummer. Uh, but for people that really want two water bottles in the front triangle and are okay to sacrifice some drop on their dropper for that, that's good news for you. So yeah, I went with the medium mainly because of that seat tube length. If the seat tube had been a little bit shorter on the medium large, and if the seat tube angle was a little bit steeper, I definitely would have gone medium large. Anyway, that's my thought process on sizing. A lot of you like the rad sizing by Lee McCormick. That doesn't really work for me unless I'm building a pump track or a dirt jump bike. For everyday trail bike, I like a much longer stretched out bike than what Lee recommends, but I know a lot of you like that video and like his idea on sizing. And I think this Roscoe is gonna be pretty close to in between what I like and what Lee likes. All right, it's all built up. We got some cool stuff going on here. We've got 29 by 2.6 XR4 tires. These are meaty tires. Remind me a bit of a dissector. I really like these tires. I run them on my 29 by 3.0 bikes on the front. These are Bontrager line 30 wheels. So 30i wheels with a 2.6. That's a little bit narrower than I like, but we're seeing a lot of that in the industry. Reminds me a lot of the specialized fuse that's running 29 by 2.6 on 30i rims as well. And this thing is meant to party. We've got 180 rear rotor, 203 front rotor, four piston hydraulic disc brakes. We've got an SLX shifter. We've got an XT derailleur, Shimano 12 speed, 170 mil E13 cranks. I love seeing that. We've got water bottle bosses inside, like I talked about. That limits seat post insertion, but they mounted it nice and low. The cable routing is all internal. I'm not a big fan of that, but that's what we see from the big bike companies because a lot of people want, like that clean look. I like being able to service my bike a little bit better, um, but let's talk about the routing. So the dropper comes in here and stays internal the whole way. That's pretty cool. The brake and shifter go through the frame. They insert on opposite this and then they come out the bottom and then they're fully external in the rear triangle underneath the seat and chain stays. It's clean and tidy routing. Um, final weight came in at 30.3 pounds. So a fair bit heavier than they claim online. That is with pedals. I'm impressed that this has such a high engagement hub. We don't see that on stock bikes often at all. So bravo for that. I've heard good things about the Line 30 hubs we'll see this thing's got a 140 mil fox 36 it's the rhythm model which i love the feel of i think they're great little forks they're a little bit heavy but it's not uh something i would need to upgrade i would feel just fine riding this thing as is so i'm a little bit disappointed that this comes with a 130 mil dropper in a size medium a 150 is noticeable and i like having 150 and I think that's all due to this desire that we have to have two water bottles inside the front triangle. That limits your dropper insertion. And that's one thing I would change on the Roscoe just on the onset is how long the seat tube is. If I could fit a 150 on here, that'd be a lot better. Uh, the size medium, large, and up have a 150. The size medium has a 130. Uh, they do do some cool things like on the size small, it comes with 750 bars. This comes with 780 bars. I've trimmed them down to 760 because that's what I do on all my review bikes. I like the bars to be the same width because different bar widths really change how a bike feels. What else? This thing looks like a all-rounder. We got a 45 mil stem. I think that's just right for these days. It's also got a slight riser bar, which I like. It's got a tall stack. 430 chainstay, 440 reach. I prefer it when the reach is longer than the chainstay. That's a good thing. Yeah, on paper, it looks really good. 30.3 pounds is not bad for something with a lot of factory brand parts like the Bontrager stem and the Bontrager bars. Could you get it lighter? Probably. Yeah, you definitely could. With enough money, any bike can be lighter. But I think 30 pounds is right about where we're seeing for these kind of rowdy, shreddy, not super expensive hardtails. 
Now, $2,700 is no small chunk of change. Unfortunately, we're seeing price increases in bikes and components. And bikes are only going to get more expensive. And I hate that because that means fewer people are getting into this sport or they're getting into the sport with bad components that are failing and giving them a bad taste of hardtails in general, but just the, the sport in general. That said, the spec on this looks fantastic. As long as these hubs hold up and these wheels hold up, I don't know what I would swap on this. Man, I really wish they could have brought this down an inch or two. Then I would have fit on a medium large and I could run a longer dropper, but we'll see. I, this might be the right size. We'll go take it out, ride it around, see what it's good at, see what it's not good at. I'm just making a lot of assumptions here. But 140 mil, that's kind of the sweet spot for a lot of people. 29 by 26 adds a lot of cushion, and especially on an aluminum frame, where aluminum frames often tend to be a little bit more rigid than others. Running a 26 lets you air down a little bit more and not get bucked around so much. And the 26s roll over stuff really well. I think a lot of people who like 27.5 by 2.8s, 27.5 plus, are going to like the feel of 29 plus as long as you're not too small for it. And really small riders, you know, it, it makes your chain stay a little bit bigger, but Trek's done a good job fitting this in here. There's plenty of mud clearance. In fact, I'll bet I could fit a 2.8 on here if I wanted to. Hmm, that'd be an interesting experiment for the future. So there are a few things that really impressed me on this build. First, which I cannot overstate, especially for where I live, is that fast engaging rear hub. You almost never see that on a stock bike. And so a lot of the bikes I end up getting or recommending, I recommend swapping out the rear hub for something higher engagement. You don't need to do that with this. When you hear the high pitched, you can hear all the little teeth catching all the little gears. What that means is there's less slack there's less take up in the drivetrain when you go to pedal and when it delivers power on most stock bikes there's a fair amount of take up and when you're half ratcheting or on really techie moves where you just need a quick little pedal in that extra slop can be the difference between cleaning the obstacle or not so cleaning. bravo trek that is huge that you were able to do that and that's the benefit of a big company like trek making their own parts is they can dictate things like that like having higher engagement hubs from the factory. Huge fan of that. And the Fox Rhythm 36 is a fantastic fork. It's a tad bit heavier than like a factory 36, but for the price, it is a ton of bang for the buck. I love the feel of this fork. And it's got plenty of adjustments. We've got rebound and we've got compression and we've got volume tokens and air pressure. So whether you weigh 115 pounds or 315 pounds, you can dial this fork in to suit your weight and to respond the way you want. I can't overemphasize the importance of an air adjustable fork on your bike. Someone who weighs 115 should not have the same spring rate as someone who weighs 315. And on the really budget bikes, you know, the under thousand dollar bikes for the most part are not adjustable forks. And so you get what it comes with. And learning to dial in your fork is so important for making a hardtail ride well between the fork and the tires and your body that's all you get for suspension and you want to be able to dial that in another thing that i applaud trek is having plenty of clearance for two sixes that is huge and there's a lot of mud clearance in here so even if you live in the uk you're going to be just fine with mud clearance in here i like the spec 45 mil stem spot on riser bar spot on nice tall stack this thing should be tons of fun now, a lot of these slack, long, and low bikes are getting more and more capable on the downhills, on the steep stuff, at speed, but they lose a little bit of that pop and playfulness, especially on jumps and like at a bike park. So I'll be excited to see if this thing feels more plowy and, you know, makes everything easier or if it's still got some of that poppy and fun playing in it. Spec-wise, this thing should be able to handle just about everything you want to throw at it. 65 mil head angle, 140 mil fork, 203 mil rotors means this thing can stop. I love that it comes with a bigger front rotor than a bigger rear rotor. A lot of other companies skimp in little places where you wouldn't see it or notice it, but that nickel and dimes you to death in the end when you go upgrading it. One of those small things being like a 203 mil rotor. That's fantastic. You know, a lot of companies have similar geo, but they're coming with 160 mil rotors, and that's just a disservice to us. It saves the company a little bit of money in the long run, but we're just going to end up swapping those out, most of us that are going to ride these things hard. 
So this 2022 Trek Roscoe is a completely different bike than the previous generation, except for the Roscoe 6. Stay away from that one. Go watch my other video to see why. But the Roscoe 7, 8, and 9, man, it's a totally new redesign, and it looks to be tons of fun. We'll have to see how it rides on the trail. That's the ultimate test. So what would I change if I could have my way? I'd put a 150 mil dropper on here, or I would make the seat tube shorter on the medium large. I'm thinking that might be the size I should probably fit on, except the seat tube's longer than it needs to be. And if that cost me a water bottle boss on the seat tube, I'm okay with that personally, because I'd rather have the seat out of the way than another water bottle in there, but everybody's different. I'd probably go external routing too, but I'm a traditional nerd like that, and I work on my own bike. I think it's got good lines. I think it's a good-looking bike. The paint scheme isn't quite my flavor, but that's personal preference. So I'm really excited about this bike. I can't wait for them to hit stores so that people can throw a leg over them and see if modern hardtails are for them or not. If not, no problem. But this has the numbers to give us what we need to give you a good idea if a modern slack longish hardtail is right for you so huge shout out to trek thank you for sending this in i've been really excited about trying this bike and i can't wait to let you guys know what it rides like so make sure you're subscribed so that you can be notified when the ride review drops of this and if you need help picking your next bike i offer a bike consultation service where people can pick my brain on what components should I put on my new frame? Or I need a new wheel set. What wheel set should I get? Or how does the Roscoe ride compared to the Specialized Fuse? I do all that on Patreon. And that's my main business is helping people navigate the confusing waters of knowing which bike to buy for their needs. If you don't need that service, feel free to keep enjoying my free videos like this. Make sure you're subscribed. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. So let's talk value. $2,700 is a lot of money. Could you get a cheaper bike somewhere else? Absolutely. Could you get one that has SLX and XC drivetrain? Yeah, you could. But that's not what makes a bike ride great. So I see so many people wanting to get the best spec they can for the money and completely ignoring geo, frame details, or ride quality. And those are way more important than what derailleur you have on it. So yeah, feel free to nerd out and have your spreadsheets and compare spec and and try to whittle it down to the components, but I don't recommend doing that. I would rather pay 300 more for a good frame with the same exact components as another bike that's $300 less with the same components, but a frame that's gonna compromise in the geometry department. There are a couple reasons I do think this bike is worth its $2,700 price tag. First up is that rear hub. I recommend upgrading the hub on almost every new bike, even the $4,000 ones, because they don't often have fast engaging hubs. A fast engaging hub is way more noticeable than going from Dior to XT derailers. You're not gonna feel a difference between those derailers, so don't get too hung up on those, but a fast engaging hub will make a world of a difference. This also comes with a fantastic fork. A lot of bikes in this price range do pretty well, but the fork is lacking. This fork is not lacking. Yes, there are sexier forks with more adjustment options on them, but those forks retail around $1,000 just for the fork. And so that's gonna significantly raise the price of the bike. This, when I get it dialed, feels 99% as good as a Fox Factory 36 when I get that dialed. If you know how to dial these in and you don't need a whole bunch of knobs with your high speed versus low speed compression or high speed versus low speed rebound which honestly most people don't know how to dial in right anyway this is simpler and if you dial it in right this will get you almost the exact same performance at a much cheaper price so for those two reasons alone i think 2700 is a fair price point i know some of you are going to argue and find a bike with full xt for 300 dollars less than this but look beyond the basic drivetrain parts. Look at hub with points of engagement. Look at what forks on it. Look at what wheels are on it. I know we get technical on this and, and get nitty gritty on the details, but this is just a reminder to get out there and ride and forget about your bike and enjoy the ride experience. And this build is solid. There's nothing anyone should need to upgrade in their first two years of riding this. You just maintain it and it should keep you going strong without having to stress about upgrade-itis where you dump another two grand into an already great bike. The paint job's kind of a mix between modern and old school 80s like I like. 
it's a matte kind of earthy tone. We've got the the green down here with the tan up here, and then it's got the speckled paint job where they fling paint on it, which I think looks cool. It looks dirty. It looks like you've taken it out on the trail and gotten it dirty. And that's kind of the theme with hardtails is go ride them hard. They're lower maintenance. Take care of it, but it's not necessarily needing to be a beauty queen. Just go out and ride the thing and have fun and worry less about what it looks like and more about having fun with your buddies. It's interesting. You can feel the raised paint on these. I wonder if everyone is unique because of that. That'd be kind of cool. The color's not totally doing it for me, but that's all personal preference. So there you have it, the brand new 2022 Trek Roscoe. There's only one thing left to do, and that's go take it on the trails and ride it. There's a party in the mountains, and you're invited.